The week's end top stories at NBR. The waste industry gears up. Warehouse deeply concerned about staff safety. Hydrogen fuel truck arrives in New Zealand. And there's more coming right up. Kia ora and welcome to NBR This Week. We start with a wrap of the end of the week's top business stories in the last week of November. From the Authority in New Zealand Business News since 1970, nbr.co.nz. Then we'll take a look back at the top NBR Today stories from the past week. I'm Paul Brennan. Thanks again for joining us. As the waste industry gears up to meet new government aspirations to put recycling over landfill, two of the country's main players have said today, Friday, they will merge, creating the third largest company in the country and the largest owned by New Zealanders. The combined entity, made from Smart Environmental Limited and Earthcare Environmental Limited, will provide collection services to more than 430,000 households across 20 councils and more than 85,000 commercial entities once recently won contracts are fully mobilised, the company said. The companies who will become one under the Smart Environmental brand will also have a workforce of more than 500 employees and contractors and operate more than 250 waste vehicles. The NZ Markets Disciplinary Tribunal has fined NZX-listed Blackwell Global Holdings $40,000 over an annual results error, followed by a sharp trading increase and a director sell-off. Blackwell was formerly a finance company, but has subsequently wound down its operations and is now a shell company seeking a reverse takeover. In NZX summary result forms released between November 2019 and June 2020, BGI incorrectly entered its net tangible assets as 15 cents per share and 28 cents a share for the prior comparable period, instead of 0.15 cents and 0.28 cents respectively multiple times. The correct figures were included in the BGI accounts released at the same time. Two-thirds of all of the warehouse employees have taken up a $100 incentive aimed at getting the entire workforce vaccinated before the business's vaccine mandate comes in on January 16, 2022. This morning, Friday, at the company's virtual annual meeting, both Chair Joan Withers and CEO Nick Grayston outlined the various measures being taken by the business to manage the risks associated with COVID-19 as part of a year of varying challenges for the business, which is nevertheless trading at record levels and generated healthy returns to shareholders in 2020 2021. The company said it was deeply concerned about violent and aggressive behaviour directed towards team members. Chair Joan Withers said the company welcomed the new Police National Retail Investigation Support Unit, which was announced this month, to address high priority repeat retail offending, including theft and abuse. Data wrangling startup Segna has raised US 125,000 in seed funding from US startup accelerator Y Combinator. The Auckland based startup, founded by Aaron Loby and Will Huddinger, kicked off 16 months ago and has raised a total of 880,000 to date. Joining NBR co editor Fiona Rotherham was Segna co founder Will Huddinger. We're focusing on growing the product, the team, and expanding globally. In about four months' time, with the culmination of Demo Day, uh, we'll be growing the team from around four to 15, and that's hiring across all fronts, software engineers, um, data scientists, as well as sales and marketing. Segna co-founder Will Hardinger with Fiona Rotherham there. Hyundai has brought New Zealand another step closer to a hydrogen fueled heavy transport future with the arrival of its first Exient fuel cell electric truck. Exient trucks have already proven themselves in Switzerland, where a fleet of 45 is set to expand to 1600 by 2025. But Hyundai New Zealand is bringing in five of the trucks for a trial that should lead to commercialisation of hydrogen fueled haulage. The truck runs off hydrogen, converting it to electricity to power the quiet electric motor without carbon emissions and without loud diesel gear changes or thick smoke. The truck trial will allow the company and its potential customers to road test the vehicle in local conditions. Funding for the vehicles was secured from the government's Low Emission Vehicles Contestable Fund. Those are our top stories as we head into the weekend, the full versions of which, along with all our breaking business news, columns and opinion, are at nbr.co.nz right now. You're watching NBR This Week. A brief look back now at the week's top stories from our daily video news program, NBR Today. Monday, Industry View of Building Materials Review. Building industry commentators are sceptical a Commerce Commission inquiry into building products will make any difference. Ensuring Kiwis have access to fairly priced building materials was a driving factor behind the review, Commerce and Consumer Affairs Minister David Clark said. We're looking at how we can lay the foundations for a more competitive building sector. There were long-standing issues of concentration in the sector, he told Radio New Zealand. But Roofing Association of New Zealand Chief Executive Graham Moore said the timing of the review was off 
and question whether the inquiry will find much anyway. It's NBR This Week, the week's top stories from our daily video business news bulletin, NBR Today. From Tuesday, Katmandu defends relief. Katmandu Holdings Chair David Kirk has defended his company's unwillingness to repay COVID-19 JobKeeper relief in both Australia and New Zealand, saying the policy had spread the pain of the pandemic fairly across investors, staff and taxpayers. Having reported first quarter financial results on November 9th for its Rip Curl, Oboz and Katmandu brands, today's AGM speeches from Kirk and Chief Executive Michael Daly held little in the way of new information for shareholders tuning into the virtual meeting. But a barrage of questions from Australian freelance journalist Stephen Main injected some life into the proceedings. Not a dollar of that money went anywhere other than where it was expected to go on maintaining people's employment, Kirk said. This is NBR This Week, the past week's top five business stories from NBR Today. From Wednesday, a new chair on the way for Kiwi Rail. Kiwi Rail will have a new chair in place by September 1st and it will be an external appointment, acting chair Sue McCormack has told the NBR. The move comes as Chief Executive Greg Miller resigned this morning, Wednesday, saying recent and sustained allegations in the media about his leadership style, while rejected by him, had become a distraction. In the past two years, six out of Miller's ten strong senior executive team have resigned. It was also alleged to NBR that the board was weak and dysfunctional and had struggled to stand up to its chief executive. McCormack said the government, as the shareholder of the state-owned enterprise, had been doing the rounds and had chosen someone as new chair whose name would be announced in due course. McCormack said Miller had approached her over the weekend about resigning and she'd called an urgent board meeting on Tuesday to discuss the matter. It's NBR This Week, the top business stories from our daily video news bulletin NBR Today. From Thursday, Judith Collins' ploy backfires. Judith Collins might have thought demoting former National Party leader Simon Bridges Wednesday night would shore up her teetering leadership. Instead, it led to a vote of no confidence in her leadership at a special caucus meeting this morning, Thursday morning, and Bridges is now a contender to replace her. In the meantime, Shane Ritty is acting leader until Nationals Caucus meets again next Tuesday to elect Nationals new leader. There is no guarantee either that next Tuesday's vote will finally end the disunity and division that has undermined the party over the past few years. This is NBR This Week. Now we're up to Friday's top story. High-profile businessmen Michael Stiasny and Peter Cullinane and former general manager of Lewis Road Creamery Nicola O'Rourke have joined forces to launch Founders Advisory to help founders from early-stage startups to those going through major market evolution. Their first such involvement is in Cleanery, a brand developed by Auckland's The Sustainable Care Company. The founders Nicola O'Rourke joined the NBR's Dita De Boney. The consumer-facing sachet, which uh, is... is how the product is delivered was really, really well thought through by the founder, Mark, in terms of understanding that lots of other products on the market in tablet form, which has usually been the go-to format, are actually really difficult and cause a lot of friction when you try to put them into a bottle. Nicola O'Rourke of the Founders Advisory with Dita Deboni there. You've been watching and listening to our review of the week's top five NBR Today stories. You can find the full versions of those stories and more with all our daily breaking business news columns and opinion at nbr.co.nz right now. Saturday at NBR, in fact or fiction, Brent Edwards and Grant Walker look at the big political story of the week, saying it overshadowed COVID concerns and housing problems, while on Monday, Duncan Garner has his say on the way forward for National. I'm Paul Brennan. Thanks for watching NBR this week. Have a great weekend. I look forward to being with you again from Monday for another NBR Today.